The Children's Book Council of Australia are thrilled to announce the winner in honour books for the 2023 CBCA Book of the Year Awards. Hi, I'm Jasper Rucastle. And I'm Catherine Munger Ayer. And today we are coming to you from the beautiful land and waters of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. And we'd like to pay our respects to elders both past and present, as today we're celebrating storytelling on land that has been home to storytelling for thousands of years. We are so excited to be presenting these awards from the stunning Australian Theatre for Young People here in Sydney. And we, as young storytellers ourselves, celebrate with you the value of seeing our lived experiences in books. We're going to be showing you some beautiful sights around our home while presenting the honour and winner books in each category. And we might even come across a writer or an illustrator along the way. The theme for this year's Children's Book Week, which officially kicks off tomorrow, is Read, Read Grow, Grow, Inspire. Inspire. So let's cheer for some books that may us do exactly that this year. Let's go! go. In 2023, there has been a super strong shortlist and the award judges have had an incredibly tough time picking the honour and winning books for each category. So let's get down to business. Our first category is Book of the Year Older Readers. Now, this is for books for readers aged 13 to 18. That's us. You want to announce the honour books? You're too kind. The honour books for older readers are Completely Normal and Other Lies by Biffy James, published by Hardy Grant. The Other Side of Tomorrow by Hayley Lawrence, published by Scholastic Australia. And the winner is, drum roll please. Woo, a graphic novel. Neverlanders by Tom Taylor, illustrated by John Summerriver, published by Penguin Random House. Here we are at The Rocks, an historic part of Sydney. You seen any writers or illustrators yet, Catherine? Nope, not yet. I guess we could do the next category while we wait. The next category is Book of the Year Younger Readers. This is for readers aged 8 to 12. And the honour books are Evie and Rhino by Nerida McMullen, illustrated by Astrid Hicks, published by Walker Books. And The Raven Song by Zana Fraylin and Bren McDibble, published by Allen and Unwin. And the winner is Runt by Craig Sylvie, published by Allen and Unwin. We found a writer. I am so psyched to introduce you guys to Hayley Lawrence, writer of The Other Side of Tomorrow. She's very kindly agreed to talk to us about her honour book in the older reader category. Oh, Congrats wow. Haley and honour book, you must be so excited. Oh that's very thrilling, yes. I am very excited especially um, given that this was the first book that I wrote. It didn't come out as my first but it, it, it was the first book that I actually wrote. That's really really thrilling. Yeah amazing and if you could give us a brief explanation of the story. Yeah, um, the story is about a teenage girl who makes a sea change. She's looking to reinvent her life. She's concerned with everything that most teens are concerned with. New life, new love, um, adjusting to a new town. And while she's thinking long term, she gets um, a quite devastating diagnosis and realises that even though she thought she had forever, her forever is narrowed down to a very short time frame. And that changes her perspective on everything about her life. Yeah, well, awesome. What inspired you to write this book? Uh, I work as a solicitor and in my early days in law I actually had a client who went through something very, very similar to this. So it was a really personal story for me. It was inspired by the idea of this teenager who thought she had forever and all of a sudden that's removed. And how does a teenager deal with that? I mean teenagers have got so many changes going on in their lives but usually they're looking forward to a really long future and when that's taken away how do you process all the opportunities and all the things you'll never get to experience in life? Yeah well, actually on that there, the characters in your book they do go through a lot of change what advice would you give to young people like myself who might be going through some difficult challenges? What I would say to anybody who's going through a really challenging and difficult time is to accept the challenges for what they are and know that growth will come out of it. You'll come out of it a better person. You'll come out of it with newer understanding about life and um, difficulties. If you 
read about a book that's a, a book that deals with a topic of change that you've not experienced, it opens your mind and it gives you a sense of empathy for other things that you haven't had to deal with yourself. Totally. And just as a general question, why do you think it is important for young people to read? Oh, it's so important <laughs> for young people to read. Um, reading is like travel. It opens your mind and it allows you to live other lives, learn lessons without having to actually go through all the mistakes that protagonists go through in reaching those lessons. Nobody gets worse by reading a book. No. Okay, <laughs> and just up finally, for any writers that might be watching from home, is there any advice that you could give them? Write, read, write, read write, read and never give up. You talk a lot about how important reading is for young people. Was there a book that when you were my age that made a big impact on you? Yes. Um, I absolutely fell in love with the John Marsden Tomorrow When the War Began series. And what I loved about that story is that it took a group of teens, put them into a, a really terrifying and unfamiliar situation and allowed the characters and the teenagers to figure out the solutions and really take agency for their own lives. Thank you so much for joining us. I think I might want to be a writer now. <laughs> Thank you, Hayley. You're welcome. Where are we up to, Jasper? Category three. Which is? Early childhood. Oh, the days you could take a nap at preschool during the day. No time to sleep, Catherine. We've got a job to do. The honor books for this category are Bev and Kev by Katrina Germain, illustrated by Mandy Foote, published by Little Books Press and Snap, written and illustrated by Anna Walker, published by Scribble Books. And the winner is Where the Live Bird Lives, written by Vicky Conley and illustrated by Max Hamilton, published by Windy Hollow Books. We're halfway through and we're still on the lookout for more authors and illustrators. Did you find any? Nope, gotta stay hydrated. Where'd you get that from? Your lunchbox. Yeah. Guess I'll do this one. The honor books for the 2023 CBCA Picture Book of the Year are Dirt by Sea, illustrated by Tom Jellett and written by Michael Wagner, published by Penguin Random House. And Paradise Sands, a story of enchantment, illustrated and written by Levi Pinfold, published by Walker Books. And the winner is my Strange Shrinking Parents, illustrated and written by Zeno Sorter, published by Thames and Hudson. This time I have with me the incredible Maxine Hamilton, who's the illustrator for Where the Lyre Bird Lives, which is the winner for this year's Early Childhood category oh for 2023. Goodness, you Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank How you so are you much. Feeling? I'm completely shocked. I was not expecting <laughs> this. That's wonderful news. Yeah, it's incredible. So in terms of your book, <laughs> do you have anything that inspired your illustration style? Um, well, I really love using watercolour and coloured pencil for my illustrations. I spend a lot of years working on a computer doing graphic design and textile design, so I'm really enjoying getting back using hand painting and yeah. hand painted techniques, so yeah. So what got you into being an illustrator? So since I was a toddler, I've always loved drawing. It's my favourite thing to do in life. And then when I started school, I really enjoyed being able to go to the school library and borrow books. And I always really looked forward to book week when they had all the stickers of all the winners and the shortlisted books. So I've pretty much had this dream since I was started school. So it's pretty amazing to be sitting here right now. <laughs> well, congratulations again. Would you like to give like a special shout out to Vicky Conley who wrote this beautiful Most story? Most definitely. Vicky's written a beautiful story and I really love that it's just encouraging people to just slow down and take a moment to enjoy nature and time with their family. And um, Christina at Windy Hollow also has done a really good job of hopefully pairing us up and encouraging me to you know, have fun along the way illustrating the book. Why do you think it's important for kids to you know, take a breath, slow down, look and listen? Well, I think in life, like if you take that time just to slow down and notice different things in nature or even just in your local environment, I think it can really actually bring you a lot of happiness and improve your well-being. So as illustrators, we automatically do that because when we get a, a book to illustrate, we start switching on to you know, that subject matter and all those characters and things. So we, we sort of do that automatically, noticing 
different little things. So I think it's a really sort of important takeaway for kids as well to just sort of enjoy their environment and notice all these little details. And, yeah. And with that, what's like got to be your all time favourite thing about being like an illustrator? Well, I really like that I get to wear my art boots to work oh. every day. That's probably one of the best things. And also maybe that I get to work with my dog every day. That's also a great thing. Um, but I also love being able to bring a story to life through my illustrations. And I also really think it's important to foster a love of books and a love of reading in children. So I like that I'm a part of that. And obviously your book is so important to so many little kids. Did you have a book like that for you when you were younger? Well, I really loved a book called Bread and Jam for Francis. That was probably my favourite book when I was a little kid. And um, Francis is a little bit of an interesting character. He doesn't <laughs> like to eat her vegetables, so she just wants to eat bread and jam. So I related to that quite a lot when I was a little oh, kid. Yeah. And uh, my dad used to read me this book nearly every night over and over again and put on all these funny voices. So yeah, and it's a pretty funny story as well that sort of just taps into everyday family life. So yeah. I think that book probably was probably one of the most profound ones for me. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking to me today and congratulations on your huge win. Um, we'd love to sit and talk all day, but we do have a job to do. Oh, thank you so much for your time and all your wonderful questions as well. Thank you very much. Why are we dressed like this? Because this award has a special name. It's called the Eve Pownell Award. Sounds fancy. What is it? It's for books that present factual information in a fun and imaginative way. I see. You want to announce the honour books? And the honour books for the Eve Pownell Award are Come Together, Things Every Kid Should Know About the First Peoples by Isaiah Firebrace, illustrated by Jalen Beum Marway, published by Hardy Grant. And Wild Australian Life by Leonard Cronin, illustrated by Chris Nixon, published by Alan and Unwin. And the winner is Deep, Delve into the Hidden World, written and illustrated by Jess McGeechan, published by Welbeck Publishing. We finally made it. This is our final award. Thanks for sticking with us, everyone, as we draw to a close. Get it, Catherine. Because this is the final award for CBCA Award for New Illustrator. Yep. Draw to a close. I think I'll do this one. Fair enough. Since this is our last one, would you like to announce the winner with me? And, and the, the winner, winner for the CBCA New Illustrator is... Tiny Wonders by Sally Sowell Hahn, published by the University of Queensland Press. So, that's it. We'd like to give a huge thank you to the CBCA for inviting us out here today, and to ATYP for hosting. And we'd like to give a special thank you to Hayley and Max for joining us today. Now, let's party. It's time for Children's Book Week. Get your library cards out, your favourite books off your shelf and into a character costume. Or just get in your PJs and read all week. Stay tuned because one week from today, we're going to be announcing your chosen winners. That's right, we see you out there. And the CBCA is hearing you and passing on your message. Over 200 groups of shadowers, young people shadowing the Book of the Year judges, have been discussing, debating and responding to the criteria the judges use and are now ready to pick your winner. The CBCA would like to thank all the 2023 judges, large and small. Congratulate all the creators and cheer for all the readers. The CBCA would also like to thank the CBCA Award Prize Foundation for providing us with the prize money for our honour and winning creatives. These prizes support and acknowledge the great Australian children's literature community we have, which means more books for us. And a huge congratulations to all the notable and shortlisted creatives whose illustrations and writing allow us as young people on whatever land you read on to read, read grow and, and inspire. inspire. Until, Until next time, keep, keep reading. reading. Bye! Bye.